Mmm. Okay, Costco, I see you. So crispy. Packets are so cute. Look at that. No wonder Hello Kitty has so many friends with these noodles. Hi everyone. In today's video, we are doing trying every Costco Asian food product part three. I mean, honestly, this is more of a continuation of the part two video. So it's kind of like part two, part two, but that's kind of confusing. So I'm just going to say part three. What had happened was for the last video, I had more stuff to share with you guys that I filmed, but it just wasn't going to fit all in one video. So I decided to split it up. I also get a lot of questions about which Costco in the Bay area I went to. And for most of the Costco videos I've done, I've either gotten the items at the Fremont Costco or the Foster City Costco. But sometimes I go to other Costco's as well, like Redwood City, San Jose, Plus, even if I was able to find those items at those Costco's, they might not be there when you decide to visit. So the best way to find the Costco items that I feature in my videos is whenever I pop up the information on the screen, you can pause and see the item number of each product. And what you can do is you can call your local Costco and give them the item number and they can look up if they have it in stock or when it will be in stock, if it's coming, if they ordered it. They can also look up which Costco nearby has it. So that's definitely the best way to find the products that I feature in my videos. That's why I include all the information there for you. You guys and yeah let's just get into this costco asian food taste test so here we have the boba milk tea mochi and that might sound familiar to you guys and that's because we tried it in our costco boba products video but there's another brand that has a version this brand is tropical fields and the other brand is yuki and love but generally it looks kind of similar you have the mochi layer on the outside in the middle there's this milk tea flavor and then on the inside there's this boba pearl type thing it looks about the same size i feel like it's less squishy the other one's more squishy Inside, it looks very different from the picture that they showed on the package. If you look at this photo, the boba is quite small in the middle and you definitely have a lot of that milk tea outer layer. But when you look at this, there's barely any of that milk tea layer. That's super interesting. Honestly, taste-wise, I feel like they taste pretty similar. I feel like I have to eat them side by side. So I'm actually going to my mom's house later today and I know they have some of the other boba mochi there. So I'll have us try it side by side and I'll input the footage here. Okay, so here we have the new mochi and then here is the old mochi and mom's here <laughs> okay cheers, cheers. This one, the mochi is definitely softer. It is very nice, actually. I love this. This one has more distinct layers inside. This is the new one. Cheers. cheers. Mm, well, the flavor is different. This has a more floral taste, which actually I'm not that crazy about. This one is a little firmer. I guess it doesn't taste that similar when you taste it side by side, but when you taste it not side by side, it kind of tastes similar. <laughs> so the winner is the old version. I love this one. And about that one. <laughs> Next up, we have this Nong Shim Premium Noodle Soup Tonkatsu Ramen. This has been around in Costco for a long, long time, and I'm surprised that we haven't reviewed it yet on this channel. Nong Shim is the same brand that made the udon that we tried last time, as well as the same brand that makes Shin Ramen, which is one of my favorite ramens. For the instructions, it says open lid halfway, remove soup base and spicy sauce packets, pour water up to the inside line, close lid for four minutes, add soup base and serve. All right, let's give this a try. It smells really, really good. And these noodles definitely remind me of Shin Ramen noodles. Mmm. Oh, that noodle consistency is really nice. It's soft, but also has a chew to it. Very, very slurpable. It's just really satisfying to eat. I will say that it doesn't hold the flavor of the broth that well. Let's go ahead and try some of this broth. You can see those little chili oil bubbles at the top. Mmm. Oh yeah. It definitely has a nice flavor. It's very like savory, umami, and I also like the addition of the spicy sauce packet that they gave. It pairs really well with it. I wasn't really sure what to expect, but I definitely will get this again. Next up, we have these braised beef short ribs with sesame barbecue sauce. Just by looking at the picture, it looks super good, super tender, and super flavorful. For the directions, it has stovetop, a microwave, or conventional oven. And for these kinds of things, I'm just gonna do microwave for this video because I'm trying to finish filming this video today and I only have limited time so microwave is just the most convenient and the fastest method place short rib pouch in microwave safe dish and pierce several times heat on high for three to four minutes in the microwave carefully remove and allow to rest for two minutes open sauce pouch and pour contents into a microwave safe bowl heat for 60 to 90 seconds remove short rib from pouch add sauce and serve so here we have our braised beef short rib with that nice sesame barbecue sauce on top the short ribs look so tender and juicy let's go ahead and cut these Oh, oh my God, did you see that? 
the bone just came right off. You can dip it in some sauce. Look at that. Mmm. Whoa. The beef is really nice. It's definitely tender and has a nice juiciness to it. I think it could be more on the juicy side, but definitely not complaining. In terms of the sauce, it's very sweet, actually. I get that barbecue sauce is sweet, but this one I think is a little bit too sweet for my taste. And it's interesting because it's also pretty salty as well. Very salty and very sweet at the same time. I guess that means we should just use less sauce because it's too sweet and too salty. So I would recommend maybe adding only half the packet. I feel like that's all it needs. <laughs> Other than that, it's pretty good. And if you're curious about it, I definitely would recommend trying it out. Just make sure that you don't add the whole sauce packet. Next up, we have this crunchy ramen noodle snack, chicken flavor. And I had to pick this up because when I was a kid, we used to crush the top ramen packet and then add the seasoning and shake it up. And my favorite was the chicken flavor. So it just reminds me of that. Let me know if you guys used to do that when you were a kid. All right, let's try it. I thought that this would bring back some nostalgia for me, but it's really missing the mark. <laughs> <laughs> the flavor that they added to it. I don't know if I would consider it chicken flavor or maybe it's just because I heavily associate ramen chicken flavor with that top ramen and this doesn't really taste like that. I don't know. It's like kind of overly salty, but then also some pieces don't have that much of the seasoning on it. So it's quite bland. This is a no for me. <laughs> Next up, we have this bun pia custard Hopia? I don't think I said that correctly, but it looks like this is some kind of Vietnamese snack slash dessert type of thing. We definitely have to give mom a shout out because she saw these at Costco and picked them up for us to try. When I've gone to Costco, I actually have seen these in different flavors. Like I've definitely seen the durian one, which I was not trying to pick up. So I'm glad that she found this pandan one. From the picture on the package, it looked like it would be definitely bigger than this. It's like so small. There's supposed to be salted egg yolk inside. So let's go ahead and cut this open. Wow, you can see that lava kind of cut Custard oozing inside and definitely is green from that pandan. Hmm. Oh, whoa. Oh, I don't know why, because this is not durian flavor, but for some reason I got like a hint of durian. Definitely not super strong. So I'm not saying that this is durian flavored because I'm sure if it was durian flavored, then it'd be hitting me in the face. But I definitely got like a hint of this kind of durian vibe, which definitely caught me off guard. I don't know. This one kind of confuses me. The outer layer is really soft, actually. I expected it to be more flaky and have more structure to it, but it's very, very soft. I was searching for the pandan flavor and I didn't really taste much, which is a little bit disappointing. Next up, we have Golden Island Pork Jerky Korean Barbecue Recipe. This is definitely something that my family has gotten many, many times before. You can see on there, there's some sesame seeds. It looks like it has kind of like a smokiness to it. Mm. It's so flavorful. You get a nice sweetness to it. It's very savory, umami. And the jerky, it's not like super tough. You can definitely bite into it very easily. What my family likes to do is we like to heat it up a little bit more, whether that be in the microwave or the oven or even the air fryer. And it gets all like warm and kind of crispy, I guess. So that's just a little pro tip for you. A family favorite in our household. Next up, we have this Hello Kitty and Friends Asha Dry Noodles. I have to admit that once I saw this at Costco, I literally could not resist because I grew up in the era of Sanrio and Hello Kitty. And when I was a kid, if anything had Hello Kitty on it, I wanted it. Usually my mom wouldn't buy it for me, but I wanted it. <laughs> so this is a little bit me living out my childhood dream. Oh my God, even the packets are so cute. Look at that. So for the instructions, it says, bring at least four cups of water to a rolling boil, add noodles and cook for three minutes, drain noodles from water after cooking, add sauce packet into the noodle, then mix and enjoy. Here we have our noodles. Mm, it has like a sesame oil soy sauce type of taste. It's very simple, but I feel like it's a good base. I feel like if I added some chili oil, a soft boiled egg, some green onions, that'd be really, really good. But yeah, this by itself, it's definitely not bad. It's very simple, but it definitely doesn't lack any flavor. No wonder Hello Kitty has so many friends with these noodles. I just realized that I had this cute Hello Kitty bowl that's specifically made for eating noodles and I didn't use it to eat my Hello Kitty noodles. I have to forever live with this regret. Next up, we have this spicy ahi pokey. And this looks like it's actually the Costco brand. It says Kirkland here. So even though the sushi in the last episode was not the best, it's technically not the same brand. So hopefully we have better luck with this one. It looks like it was marinated in like a sriracha mayo type of situation. Definitely see some green onions in there as well as some fish roe, some sesame seeds. I'm gonna be eating it over some rice. So let's give it a try. 
Mmm. Mmm. The fish is surprisingly very soft and buttery. It's not tough at all. Mmm. Okay, Costco, I see you. This is not bad at all. I don't know if it was because I was kind of scarred from the sushi from last time, but I did not have high expectations going into this and I'm pleasantly surprised. In the marinade, I'm definitely getting a spicy mayo type of flavor and also sesame oil. It's pretty prominent. And I also like the brightness that the green onions adds. By no means is this the best poke you can get, but definitely not bad. So I think if you see this at your local Costco, pick it up and I don't think you'll be disappointed. Next up, we have this Snapdragon Thai Basil Chicken. And this is the same brand that makes the first Instant Pho we tried. Not the one from the last video, but the one from the video before that. For the directions, it says, remove paper sleeve and empty bags in tray. Cover and heat on high two minutes for one bag or four minutes for two bags. Stir, cover, and heat for another one minute or until hot and serve with rice. Um, it definitely looks a little bit questionable. I don't know. It's just a lot more brown than I was expecting, but let's see if it tastes any good. Hmm. So for the flavor, I definitely get a strong basil flavor. There are really nice chunks of chicken in this, which I appreciate. Although some of them have been dry, like some of them aren't dry, which is good, but some of them are dry. <laughs> there also is some bell peppers in here, so that adds to the flavor as well. Texture-wise though, the bell peppers are cooked down a lot. I guess it's kind of on the mushy side, but overall this is not horrible. I definitely wouldn't say it's my favorite thing, and I'm not too convinced that I would buy it again. Next up, we have this Cafe Spice Taste India Sog Paneer family pack. I got so excited when I saw this at Costco because whenever I go to an Indian restaurant, I always order sog paneer. It's simmered spiced spinach with paneer cheese. For the instructions, it says remove sleeve, peel back film two inches, heat on high for eight to 12 minutes or until piping hot. Let stand for one minute and enjoy. Okay, so here we have our sog paneer and oh my gosh, it looks so good. It looks pretty similar to the ones that I get in restaurants. You can see those beautiful little cubes of paneer. I know they look like tofu, but it's not tofu. It's like cubes of cheese. So here I'm eating it over some rice. But if you watch my first Costco video, I got some of their naan from Costco and I feel like that would be really good with this as well. Mm. Mm. Oh man, I haven't had paneer in a hot minute and I really missed it. It has this nice cheesiness to it, but it also does kind of have the texture of tofu, like firm tofu almost. But it's very soft and it has a nice chew to it as well. And it pairs perfectly with the spinach. I have to say though that this one definitely does not compare to the sog paneer that I get at the Indian restaurants. The ones at the restaurants are just so flavorful and they have so many spices. Whereas I feel like this one doesn't have as many spices and you definitely get like a really strong spinachy taste which I feel like at the restaurants, it's not a super strong spinachy taste. So yeah, this one, definitely not my favorite sog paneer, but it'll definitely hold me over in my cravings. Next up, we have this teriyaki stir fry udon with mixed vegetable topping. Just looking at the photo, it looks super good. The udon looks so chewy. For the directions, it says, place three to four tablespoons of water, vegetable topping, and teriyaki seasoning in a microwave ready bowl and mix well. Add udon noodles to bowl and mix well. Cover the bowl with a lid and microwave for three minutes and 30 seconds. Carefully remove the lid from the bowl and mix well. Okay, so here we have our udon. The noodles look nice and bouncy and springy. I do think it's interesting because inside here there's peas and I feel like I've never had peas in an udon before. But yeah, let's go ahead and try it. Hmm. So with the udon texture, it is kind of chewy, but it's not as like springy and bouncy as I would like. In terms of the flavor of the teriyaki, it's quite mild. I don't know if I added too much water when I was mixing that sauce in the beginning, but overall, I'm a little bit underwhelmed, if I'm being honest. Although it probably tastes better when you stir fry it on the stove top. So if you do end up picking this up, I definitely would recommend trying that method over the microwave method. Next, we have this Castella cake, which is a Japanese sponge cake. And this reminds me of being in Taiwan because I remember I'd be walking the streets and they have these huge huge cakes and they cut them and they're so jiggly and they're so like light and soft and airy. So yeah, once I saw this at Costco, I knew I had to pick it up. And this is actually made by Imuraya, which is the same brand that makes the matcha mochi ice cream that we tried in the last video. It's very delicate. I feel like it's already starting to fall apart in my hands. There's paper on the bottom. <laughs> Don't be like me and forget to take off the paper before you bite it. 
So I think flavor wise, it does taste pretty good. It's kind of more on the sweet side because I feel like other Castella cakes that I've had usually aren't this sweet, but I feel like if you pair it with like a hot green tea or something, it would taste really good with it. In terms of the texture, it's definitely not as fluffy and spongy and airy and light as the ones that you get when they make it fresh. But obviously that's kind of expected because nothing can compare to like a fresh baked Castella cake. When I'm eating it, I wouldn't really classify it as a sponge cake. It definitely has a denser texture, almost just like a normal cake would. So yeah, I don't think it really classifies as a sponge cake, but it does taste decently good. It's definitely not bad. And last but not least, we have these Royal Asia vegetable spring rolls with edamame. I actually pass by these a lot when I'm browsing the Costco freezer section, but I've actually never tried it. For the instructions, there are two methods. You can bake them or you can air fry them. So we're definitely gonna air fry them. Heat at 375 for eight minutes, flipping halfway through. The spring rolls are heated when golden brown and crispy. All right, we have our vegetable spring rolls here. By the way, do you guys call these spring rolls? Because I call them egg rolls and spring rolls to me are the ones that are wrapped in rice paper and they're not fried. So let me know, do you call them spring rolls or egg rolls? Do you guys hear that? So crispy. It also comes with this soy ginger sauce. So let's give it a little dip. That crunch, oh my goodness. I think I may have left it in the air fryer a bit too long because I checked at the eight minute mark, but they weren't crispy enough. So I left them in for a few more minutes and I think that was a little too much. I think it does pair well with the soy ginger sauce. And you guys know how I feel about ginger. I feel like when you eat it without the sauce, it's a bit bland. All right, so that's it for today's Costco video. Let me know in the comments if you guys have tried any of these products because I definitely wanna hear your opinions. And if you like these Costco videos, make sure you hit that thumbs up because if you guys wanna see more Costco videos, I can make more Costco videos. And the best way to let me know that you like them is to give this video a thumbs up and also comment down below. And yeah, if you guys like this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell so you get notified when I upload. Give this video a thumbs up. And here's today's comment shout out. Thank you so much for your support. And if you wanna be in the next video's comment shout out, make sure you comment something down below. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. What is it? It's called Mandarin Noodle. <laughs> Whoa, you're a pro. Mom. Oh, you already bought one. It's weird because the boba is the big part and the milky part is the small part. What? <laughs>